Hi, I'm depressed alcoholic comedian James Norquise. A couple of years ago, I had a mental health breakdown which resulted in panic attacks on international flights, stepping in front of an oncoming bus, and eventually showering so long that I began to get a little bit hungry. And that's when I discovered something magnificent. Through the magic of takeaways and running water, it turns out my mental health safe space is eating fried chicken in the shower. And that's how we've ended up here, a mental health podcast on headspace and happiness. This episode, I'm talking to my FM breakfast host, Tegan Yorif. We'll be talking about keeping strange hours. My first alarm went off at like 4.05 this morning, but that's every morning, so it's okay. And I'm a little, I'm a little bit on the like low-key sick side as well, so it's the make, that makes the early mornings like super tough. Getting strange messages. You can have a hundred nice comments, but you get one bad one and that'll ruin your whole day. And dealing with strange expectations. Just because I'm a public person mm. that has spoken about mental health, mm. it doesn't mean I should hold the weight or the pressure to be the voice for mental health for fucking everybody. Some of this will get a bit real, the language, the subjects. So make sure that you're in a safe space with your comfort food. And join us, eating fried chicken in the shower. Hi, and welcome to Eating Fried Chicken in the Shower, a mental health podcast with me, James Norquise. And today I'm joined by Tegan Yorif. 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 It's spelt with a W and a whole bunch of other letters, but it's actually pronounced Yorif. Yeah, see, it's Welsh and I should be able to pronounce that. Mm -hmm. But Welsh is hard yeah. if you've grown up with like the vowel languages, like mm -hmm. Samoan or mm -hmm. Tadeo, because you go from A, E, E, or U to cluck, 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 cluck. Yeah, I've never even tried to speak Welsh and I haven't been to Wales. I just have no, like, no, uh, I'm not in touch with it at all. Thank you for coming into the shower, partly because you do breakfast radio. Mm -hmm. You're part of My FM's morning crew. Is it morning crew? Yeah, it, the yeah. My Morning Crew. The My Morning mm -hmm. Crew, the mm -hmm. My Morning Crew, the yeah. MMC. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and th that means that no matter what time we record this, you have gotten up way earlier than me. Oh, yeah, I think my first alarm went off at like 4 or 5 this morning. Ooh. But that's every morning, so it's okay. And I'm a, little, I'm a little bit on the like low-key sick side as well, so it's, <laughs> it make, that makes the early mornings like super tough. But I'm just like, oh, whatever. I recorded my weather this morning, which is the first thing I do when I get in. Yeah. And it's like, Morena, Tamaki Makoto, you must play hoodie there for today. Like, it's terrible. Is it yeah. like a little bit of pressure living in a pandemic COVID time to have anything that affects your throat oh yeah but then it's like otherwise i've got to do a freaking like a show from home and that's admin and yeah. so i'm like okay if i'm only a touch under the weather i'm sure i'm okay i'm just gonna yeah do my due diligence and yeah. hand sanitize and yeah cover my mouth or yeah. whatever you and know? then come into a shower with a guy and just yeah. eat greasy and it's chicken just a nice little cesspit of germs right here hi I mean, and welcome to the last episode of eating fried chicken <laughs> <in the> <laughs> Um, because how long have you been doing uh, mornings? Uh, two and a half years. Right. Yeah, yeah. So two years officially on the My Morning Crew, but I did six months before that just doing the news reading and stuff and with the show. Yeah, the first week I was on, I um, my mic didn't turn on and it literally went, my news, and I went, fuck. And I was like, oh, great, first week, first week. Swore, said the F word in the middle of the news. But, you know, it is what it is. That's all right. Like, yeah. I still do the sport. I still read all the sport. <laughs> is that based off swearing? After, like, you go, no, here's the news, well, fuck. He should the be thing a sports was, reporter. is I actually, my, I'm pretty sure my boss, he didn't want me to do news or sport because he was like, you've got a full-time job doing the show, essentially. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't let the sport go because um, there's so many Māori and Pacifica names mm. in sport that don't really get the justice or even the time to be pronounced, pronounced correctly. So I was yeah. like, can I just have that? Yeah. And then I'll know that I'm either pronouncing it correctly or doing my freaking best to do so. And just for our listeners who may have picked up on the two different ways in which we pronounce the Pacifica and Pacifica, yeah. uh, Tegan is using the Auckland uh, pronunciation. Is and, it Auckland? Uh, and I'm using the Wellington oh. pronunciation. <laughs> what so does that mean? Does that mean? It means mine's more pretentious than yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I actually had to do an announcery today and we were saying, is it Pacifica? It's, it's, you well, enunciate the F, right? Do you know the problem is? What? So we're like, Pacific Ocean is so many nations. Yeah. And all of the accents get yeah. vowels just a little different. Yeah. Like, it's the same thing with like, um, whenever I speak today, yeah. like, at formal functions, yeah. I always have to like, apologize to the elders yeah. afterwards and just let them know, hey, I'm Samoan. My vowels are Samoan. Yeah. 
I know to some of you. I just yeah. sounded like dish when I spoke it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Do you, wait, so I w- it was Samoan language week not that long ago. Mm. And what I find so interesting about Samoan language is like, I feel with Māori and even in, with Tongan as well, it's like, da, 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 whereas in Samoan, it just seems to roll. Like yeah. the words roll and I, like even man, manuia, mm. whereas I was seeing it as um, manuia. That's yeah, how I was seeing right. it in my yes. head because that was the sort of, the letters I was putting together. But it, yeah, interesting language. Because um, you're uh, Māori ancestry, right? right. Yes, yeah. I am um, part Māori, Ngātikuri and Te Aupori, And um, I would say my main ancestry would be Welsh and sort of my more uh, NZ European side. I think I've got some French, Italian, English, whatever else in there. But I am on that sort of whakapapa journey and learning about my um, heritage. I've been to my whenua once now which is yeah, actually yeah. really it's a really empowering experience and also I got my first tamoko as well which um as a part of my I think was really important in my mental health journey as well mm. I sort of did a lot of like research in in the sense of being a bit more holistic about it mm. and a lot of people actually reached out to me and said um that learning where you came from is a really beautiful way to feel like you know who you are and be a lot more comfortable with yourself. And it was actually, did help with my mental health as well. You know what we say in the Samoan culture is the tattoo is under the skin and the tattooist just reveals it. Oh wow, that's beautiful. It is beautiful. I do have the Bacardi bat on my shoulder, (laughs) so, but I'm also an alcoholic, so maybe that does. So maybe it's all just, yeah, 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 it still makes sense. sense. (laughs) And are you close with your parents? Yeah, really close. Yeah, Yeah. my parents are um, still together, fortunately. I know that's a bit of a kind of minority thing these days. So it's, yeah, preach to the choir. (laughs) Um, Mum and Dad celebrated their, uh, they celebrate their 31st wedding anniversary this wow. year yeah oh, that's yeah. awesome yeah super t- super close with them though yeah. and like where, where are you from like originally where'd you grow up um i'm an army brat so kind of right. grew up all over the place yeah yeah born born in wellington uh, the best the best city lived in uh papakura south auckland for like five years moved to palmy for a couple of years moved to tonga for a couple of years moved right. back to palmy for a couple of years lived in the united states for a year and then finished my schooling in palmy and then now I've lived in Auckland for the last like seven years, like yeah, since cool. uni. Yeah, so I've kind of yeah, been yeah. everywhere. I've been in Auckland for a long time. I would usually say I'm from Palmy. That's where I say. Yeah, right. Because I did a lot of my growing up. And there. you would voluntarily say you're from Palmy. Yeah, that's amazing. I know. P naughty. I'm the P naughty shorty. P naughty yeah, shorty. That's what I like to say. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So you were like growing up when they like didn't even have anything in Palmy as well. I mean, we had the plaza. Yeah. The Esplanade. Um, <laughs> like the square. The train there. The square. square. Had, hadn't even been done up then. Yeah. It? It's just <laughs> like no. a field in the middle of the city. You know what? Palmy gets a lot of Palmy gets a lot of heat, but I think it's the perfect place to raise a family. Yeah. Because it's not too. I don't know. I feel like Auckland would be really interesting to grow up, and I, I think I feel like Wellington's really similar as well. It's like mm. everyone reps their area code really hard. Yeah. And Palmy's oh, just very yeah. like. No one really cares about what school you're from, and like it's just like, uh, like whatever. Whereas here, it's like, yeah, I'm from. And my sister went to Ag. She went to school in Auckland, yeah, and right. it's, she would rep that she went to Ag's quite heavily. Whereas me, I'm just like, oh, I went to Freiburg High. I I still get guys back in when I turned. They're like, yeah, man, burn it's boys. And I'm like, I'm like we what? are in our late thirties. It has been <laughs> twenty years, man. Yeah, see, I don't get that. I don't yeah. get it. Yeah. And, but how? And did you go straight into radio? Uh, no, I went to uni. I studied at um, AUT, Auckland University of Technology. I did a Bachelor of Comms. Um, I majored in TV and screen. So I actually, yeah. although I fucking loved radio, absolutely yeah. loved radio, and that was my goal going in, but at AUT you learn so much and kind of touches of different parts of the industry. Mm. I actually failed radio, funnily enough, in yeah. uni. So I did TV, not as a second option, but I just thought, oh, I'm, I seem to understand TV a lot better. Right. Um, and then out of uni, just applied for a job at... George FM editing videos and, and doing their social content and stuff like that. So it was the TV part of my degree that got me into radio, ironically. But yeah, yeah. and then I've just been there ever since. So I've been there for the last four years. Is it weird yeah. to be like stable after a childhood kind of going yeah. everywhere? Yeah, and I'm very aware that because of the job I'm in now, like being a broadcaster, I yeah. th- a broadcaster is a very fancy name for what I do. I feel like <laughs> it, I just turn up and talk shit like for four hours a day. But I, it's, I eat chicken in a shower. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, but so like, I feel like being a broadcaster, Auckland is kind of the only place. Hmm. Well, no, but you could go to Wellington, could go to Christchurch, but I feel like for what I'm trying to achieve and what I want to do, like Auckland is just where I'll be based indefinitely for now. Yeah. So I'm kind of just like, oh, but it is kind of weird being really stable. Yeah. And yeah. knowing that I've been here for seven years, I'm like, shit, <laughs> I haven't stayed in one place for that long my whole life. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's fuzzy. Um, what chicken have you bought for us? Um, I went with the buttermilk fried chicken from Bird on a Wire because every time I go past Bird on a Wire, I have to do the little reverse backtrack and go buy some because it's my favorite. Yeah. Are we digging in? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's I, just, go. I, was like, I was gonna keep talking to you. I was you being about shy. Like I was being shy. Don't be shy. Oh my gosh. I would have got it straight away. Oh, you should have dug in. I feel bad now. I'm sorry oh. I detained you. Ooh, it's looking a bit fancy with the old uh, some greenery on there. I don't know if it's just a Do you know what these sauces are? Are you a connoisseur? Um I think this is like an aioli or something. Okay. And then this one's the same but with a bit of spice. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna go spice. I, I do a bit of a mix. Oh yeah? Yeah. And I always lick the, lick the lid. <laughs> oh, I just got like the biggest whiff of <coughs> garlic <laughs> in my life. All right. That's good. Mm. It's on. Mm. I feel like their fried chicken feels really light as well. Mm. And that's why I don't feel as guilty when I go get it. Well, just know I'll never have a six pack. Oh, like abs? Life. Yeah, in my life. Is it as important though? I tell you what, growing up, mm. I feel like maybe, and definitely through my teenage years, the epitome of like the perfect bod for like a female, I was thinking was like, I would see like runway models. Mm. And I thought you had to be so skinny. Mm. And genetically, naturally, that was not me. I was tall, yeah. but I was definitely a little bit wider set. Not big, like slim, mm. but just not, you know, I had boobs and I had a little bit of a bum and I had big thighs and all my friends were these t were tiny and I thought oh my god I'm I'm so big compared to them so there was a lot of body issues then mm. but now I'm like oh god no I'd much rather be have a bit of junk in the trunk so to speak or curves yeah curves because yeah. now that's the more desirable body and I, I hate to say it but you know thanks to the Kardashians and and like those kind of women yeah although their bodies are I was gonna say a touch manufactured they're mm. pretty manufactured but they 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 yeah, they did give a, all of a sudden that kind of body was desirable because, and girls gassed up other girls with bodies like that. But fuck, like, your body is your body. Like, I'll gas up anyone for whatever their body looks like. But it's, it, that's the thing is that I, I get what you're saying is that when all, when everyone is one build mm. and just through genetics, mm. you're the other build. Yeah. You know, it's, you, you're kind of like, there must be, or there must be something wrong with me because yeah. I'm the odd one now. Yeah. It takes a while to kind of learn that acceptance, but... That's the beauty of growing up. You kind of mm. just find yourself and you just like stop giving a shit about, I don't know, that kind of little stuff. Mm. But every now and then you feel waves of it. Like recently I've been going through this whole thing that last year, right before lockdown or during lockdown, I got quite thin and, you know, I was working out a lot. Mm. Probably not eating as much as I should, but when I was eating it was well. Mm. And I just dropped all this weight got really toned, but I wasn't that happy, mm. to be fair. But now I'm like, you know, I'm actually like 10 kgs heavier. Mm. I don't feel heavy. I still mm. work out heaps, but I just eat whatever I want. But now I'm going like, like, was that the better body type? Is this the body type I like? I still feel comfortable because I work out heaps, but I kind of sometimes just compare myself to other people going like, oh, but I wish I was just like a touch thinner. But I just need to be like, oh, but it's not sustainable. And it's, I just trying to get my like, head out of that space. It can be really tough. Have you had, have you had a hard breakup uh, in, in your life? If it was, mm -hmm. if, was it the, can I just ask, only because it's a very familiar, were you doing the depression workout? Like, like after oh, a breakup, yes. post breakup? Yeah. <laughs> Car pie sister. I yeah. Like, yeah. I think I've never been as ripped as mm. when I came out of a long term relationship. No, the thinnest and, yeah. and most ripped I was yeah. was like not quite at the breakup stage, but it was yeah. in the lead up. Yeah. yeah. So it was like and then yeah, and then he left me and I just that's what I had to do. I just had to keep like yeah. working out and then yeah. even in lockdown because it was through lockdown and yeah. I was like all good like I was like I'll, I'll go work out in my room I'll be fine like yeah. yeah there was a stage I was doing comedy gigs mm. and then going to the gym what the heck it was, yeah and like it was me and like the people who clean um, Wellington's buildings because some of those oh guys would yep. clean the buildings mm -hmm. and then come to the gym and so one o'clock in the morning there's like seven of us oh my god and it's one of those things where you go no this is normal yeah because I need to be healthy I need to be in shape I need to be better mm -hmm. And then you tell your mates, and they're like, what the fuck are you doing at the gym Hard. at one o'clock in the morning? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're right. And then like if a couple I, of years later, yeah. you're a little bit heavier. Mm. You're not as hardcore, but man, you're happier, right? Hard. And I think back then when I was looking at myself in the mirror, although I could see I was toned and mm. a bit thinner, it was never enough in mm. my head. It wasn't mm. enough. And then I think now when I look, I'm like, 
Uh, I'm just like, oh, okay, that's what my body looks like today, sweet ass. Like, oh, I'm a bit bloated today, whatever. That's why you need to get some Samoan aunties in your life. Oh, well, yeah. Because then I... no matter how curvy you are, that, yo, you look good, you look healthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Eat more, eat more. No, no, I just gout. Not gout, enough. gout. <laughs> Diabetes gone. We have. We have. <laughs> how, are you, how are you with guilt? Um, better. Yeah. When um, there was definitely a time where it was almost like a, um, I would really feel guilty, like especially when I was work, working out a lot. If mm. I didn't work out, I would mm. feel terrible and I'd make myself feel terrible mm. about it. But I definitely don't do that now. I'm kind of like, if I don't feel like working out one day, I'm just going to be like, no, I don't feel like it today. And it's like, okay to feel like that. Yeah. But um, it took me like maybe a, like a year after being in a really low spot to mm. really build myself up to not make myself feel, feel guilty all the time. Because I feel guilty, like, I love burger fuel, yeah. but I know it is not good for the belly. Like, you no. know, I'm going to get some love handles if I keep eating it in the consistency that mm. I do. But I love burger fuel. So I, sometimes it's just like, oh, just fucking eat it. Like, who cares? <laughs> like, just have it. Like, your life is short. What if I die tomorrow and I didn't have burger fuel when I wanted to? I feel like burger fuel needs to get you to do an ad campaign. I have been trying. I am always like plugging them constantly on air. I'm like, I love Burger Fuel. I come at least twice a week, Look, like surely. So, uh, what did you do? What did you do for yourself? Because I, I I respect a long journey. One of the mm-hmm. things that annoys me sometimes talking mental health with people. Mm-hmm. You want to go, yeah, man, and then I just came out of it like that, and I'm like, no, no, no you that's didn't. not how it works, right? Yeah, I respect the slow journey. Yeah. Like, what what did you do to help yourself feel less guilty? Um, I don't know. It just. I, I feel like because it wasn't an instantaneous thing for me, so I think yeah. it was harder for me to notice what was what I did different. But I think a big thing was um, I think you kind of I I'm definitely because I'm such an extrovert, and I think the way that I recharge my batteries is through like a lot of social interaction, mm-hmm. a lot of being around people. So it was almost being around the right people. Yeah. People that didn't, you know, uh, I'm not saying there was a lot of toxic people in my life, but there was definitely a couple that I had to just mm. either limit my interactions with or cut the interactions completely. Mm. Um, but I definitely think hanging around people that don't, don't gas you up, mm. that can cause me to kind of like get in that like real, the you know, my inner monologue to really get in that negative self-talk and stuff like that. So, and like not just related to the guilt, just related to feeling shit. Mm. I think it was just slowly one by one culling different toxic habits that I had toxic people that surrounded me and and like and then it slowly I saw the shift starting to change it took like I think I was at my lowest point at some point last year and it's taken now which I'd say is at least a year Mm. um for me to and and I've definitely had highs and lows because I think People yeah. think like you have depression once and then it goes away. Yeah, yeah. and then and, you and then you ascend, and, you, and then it. it's just like constantly going up. Nah, it's like it's it's something that you have and you have a low point, and then it's just a constant battle for the rest of your life trying to manage mm. how to not get back there. Yeah. And I think there's a couple of times I've sort of slipped in that year, but I've never it's never been as consistent as it was. Mm. And I think it's just, and now I'm at a really nice place that I still have those lows and I still Mm. have the same thoughts, but I am so much more self-aware and have a better understanding of why my brain works that way and um, all that kind of stuff that I think that's why I'm just in a better spot. But yeah, yeah, it was, it was a a long time and I know it's, it's going to be like this for the, for the rest of my life. Mm. It's, and because there'll be new challenges where like right now I'm a single 24, nearly 25 year old female, mm. you know, when I'm in a relationship, when I eventually get into a relationship, there's going to be new things that I'm, that are going to be challenging. Mm. When I have kids one day, mm. that's going to be a new thing that are, you know, new things that'll challenge me. Um, maybe a new job. I'm going to keep this job for a little while, but yeah. you know, maybe I have a new one and there's like a burger fuel ad campaign. Exactly. Yeah. There's other things that might trigger certain emotions that I didn't, because I haven't been in that situation before, weren't mm. aware, wasn't aware of that it, that could actually happen. I think it's just going to be constant. I think it's just like always giving yourself props for how far you've come and what you are able to deal with on a daily basis and not getting too caught up in the future, mm. not getting too caught up in what's happened in the past, just being present, like day-to-day shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's been real helpful for me. And I think like, because I've got depression with um, a bit of anxiety. Mm-hmm, same. Uh, like high that. functioning as well. Oh, high functioning. So everyone, oh, you know, everyone kind. thinks I'm thriving, but yeah. I'm actually just so conscious of yeah. not thriving that I do 
more than I need to. If, yeah, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. I, yeah, yeah mine, mine manifests in crowds. Oh, wow. How really? ironic, hey? Yeah. Put me in front of one. Yeah, one. Yeah, put me in front of one. Yep. Awesome. Like, go to a festival, like, big stage. Mm -hmm. Yep, awesome. Mingle in the crowd. Too panic much. attack. Wow. Like, just like, oh, I can duck out and duck in, but mm -hmm. I've got to, I can't be in it. I've got mm -hmm. to be on the edge of it. Mm -hmm. I actually have, currently I've got a couple of flatmates and two of them mm -hmm. battle with anxiety, depression, right. yeah. PTSD as well. Right. So it's really interesting, our real open conversations where, I'll have my door closed and I'll just be like, just having a mm. like low day. And it's like, cool, let me know if you need anything. Yeah. Like, cause sometimes you just need to sit in your bed and just do nothing and feel Absolutely. sorry for yourself. Like, yeah. but as long as you get up the next day and you know, yeah. but we're, we're all very aware of each other and go, make sure you've had a shower, make sure you go get your 20 minutes yep. in the sun, you know, yes. outside mood stabilization, yeah. stabilization, like all sorts of stuff like that. But yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, and it's kind of, I do find it kind of jarring. Like, I try to normalize me mm. saying, yeah, I've got depression and mm. anxiety because I feel like the more I say it, the less ma I'll ever feel about it. Mm. Like, fuck am I, like, embarrassed. Mm. Um, but I still, even if I meet a new person, like, say it's a guy, like, oh, I'm not going on a date. You don't like, I, how many dates in do you say, oh, by the way, I've got mental health issues. Yeah. I'm, like, pretty stable right now, but, you know, <laughs> give me a bit touch and go <laughs> sometimes. Like. What do you do to get to sleep? Um, I just, honestly, mm. this is not conventional and I'm not recommending this to anybody, but I love TikTok. I love sitting, having a wee scroll. I know you shouldn't have like a bit of like mm. phone but time before bed. I know that's not good and not recommended for anybody, but mm. I absolutely love TikTok. It's my favorite app mm -hmm. because I just, the, the shit I find on there, mm. I find content for the next day for work. Right. But I also just find funny stuff that I wouldn't normally see mm. and I find it a really, I don't know, it's just a nice little safe space where I don't feel like, because I don't really post on TikTok. Mm. I've, got a, I've got an account for work. I post some work stuff. That's right. about it. Yeah. But it's, I think because I'm not, I'm using it, TikTok as such a bystander as opposed to like, you know, really mm. using it, consuming it so much. I kind of just use it really passively. It's my favorite app. That's literally what I do before bed. Yeah. You TikTok, TikTok, I TikTok, before. I TikTok. Yeah. Wow. Mm. I don't think I've ever heard anyone like give that as a response. Is that because of is it the generation thing? I don't know because I like I I generally asked it from a place of like um, because of your life and because of the energy that you, you know as someone in their twenties would have at what seven nine mm. eight nine o'clock in yeah. the evening. Yeah. I was wondering how you like calm your head to get enough rest. I just well to be fair like I feel because I finish work so early in the day I try to get you know go to the gym whatever I'm home by like 1 2 p.m. usually on a good yeah, day yeah and I have so much time on my own I think I wind down on my own my flatmate, flatmates will come home five six o'clock I'll have mm. a quick catch up with them mm. but I'm already like settles I think I just naturally have to settle myself down because I'm not doing anything you know um but I used to do the old I want to be like a bit like uh, I used to have a, I have a, uh, a resilience journal mm. and so every day I used to write I um, when I'm feeling my most low is when I'll use it the most and I just write what I'm grateful for mm. so it's like um, today I'm grateful for blah, blah blah I've got like a little grid and I color in how happy I'm feeling on a scale I say if I've had good sleep if I've moved today mm. um, I tick a whole bunch of boxes some smiley faces might as well put a little freaking sticker on there. And mm -hmm. then it just has a positive affirmation at the end where I go, I am feeling good about tomorrow. Or I am mm -hmm. um, confident in this or whatever it may be. And doing that every night, night was a really nice way to just switch off mm -hmm. and um, leave whatever happened that day behind and get ready for the next day. But um, when I'm in a good spot, which I'd say I'm in a pretty good spot at the moment, I don't really um, rely on my journal so much, but I do have it there if I need to. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm, yeah. I find when I get into a, you know, my most anxious, I'm really fortunate that one of the people I have in my life is my dad. My dad mm. is a, he's ex-army now, but army man, logical. <laughs> so if I ring him crying, saying, dad, I don't know what to do, I can't. Because mm. sometimes I get in a spot where I'll be at a crossroads where I have to make a decision and I physically cannot make the decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because... One, if I make one, it might be easier for me, but it's disappointing someone. Or it's probably not yeah. disappointing someone, but it feels like it is. Go the other way. It's not something I want to do, but it makes everyone else happy. Mm. Uh, and I quite often get stuck in these crossroads. And I physically cannot see a way forward. Mm. So I'll ring my dad and I'll go, oh, I can't do this. And he will just explain it in the most logic. He just takes all the emotion out of it. 
sees it in the most logical sense. And then I go, ah, okay, I'll just do that. It doesn't matter if this person feels this way or it doesn't matter if I feel this way. Like, I've just got to do what makes sense to happen. So I feel like, yeah, like writing that kind of stuff down and actually just writing out, okay, here's the pros and cons of a situation and here's an actual solution rather than just creating problems in your head. I think it's really mm. important to create solutions. Otherwise, you're just going to be stuck. Mm. And that's what our anxiety does to us. It just cripples us and just keeps us in one spot. But sometimes mm. when you're in your own head, mm. you're also creating the reality of your thinking as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you write it out, it kind of forces you. It's like when you look in the mirror and then when you see a picture of yourself. You're like, hold on. Yeah. I thought I looked hot today. <laughs> and you're like, oh, um, that photo doesn't say that. That's literally me. But, you know. but I, I find out like when I'm like in my head and I'm like, oh, because of this and this. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, someone close to me will go like, well, just write it down. And then as soon as I write it down. Mm -hmm. It's the same way actually I create. When I, oh, really? when I make shows on that. Yeah. So I'll think of it, but then when I write it down, I'll, I'll like do the problem solving and go, mm -hmm. oh yeah, no, I can move that to that yeah. and that. Mm -hmm. Wait, that's cool. Oi, we on. Yeah. So it's anxiety thinkers. Yeah, man. anxiety <laughs> thinkers. I like it. But you see, I, I, uh, we had another guest on here who said, you make it seem like a, a superpower and it becomes a lot easier. And it I is. like that. Anx Ooh. We anxiety thinkers, man. Yeah. We think of all the problems that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> so we're prepared for all of them. But like, I, I just don't know what you mean. Like, mm. I um, always was quite an anxious person, but never, even when I was a teenager, it wasn't normal to have anxiety or depression or, you mm. know, or we weren't having those conversations of course. yet. Yeah, yeah. And I had my first panic attack when I was 14 and, and not realizing what I was having was a panic attack. Just being, I remember explaining it to my dad and he said, oh, you probably had a panic attack. And I was like, oh, well, that, that's what that was. I just knew I couldn't breathe and I knew mm. I physically couldn't feel like I could move and mm. all that kind of stuff. And there's so many situations I now think back in high school. I'm like, I fully was having a panic attack, but I had no idea what that was. And I think I grew up in a household where, you know, and bless my mum, she was very like, oh, you know, um, but, you know, look at what you do have, you know, be mm. grateful for what you do have. But I think now in... Um, in hindsight, I kind of think, oh, wow, but you know, your issues are only what you know. And yes, someone could have it worse. Mm. But I think if you're struggling in your own life, in your own sort of timeline, you have to acknowledge that whatever you're feeling is very valid mm. because that's what you know. Mm. Like, okay, yeah, I'm crying over uh, having a breakup, but I've still got a roof over my head, still got food in my belly, that kind of stuff. And, you know, someone could go, well, oh, there's people that are living in poverty and, you know, mm. you actually have it really good compared to them. It's like all in perspective, you've got to keep things in perspective to what you know and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I think that was one of the most useful things I learned in my 20s is mm. that it's not the pain Olympics. Mm. You don't have to compare to your other friends yeah. either. Because yeah. I do think I did have friends as well. You could vent to them about what you're struggling through and it's like, oh yeah, well, I'm going through this. <laughs> and you're like, well, okay, when did I ask? Yeah. But um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, I think there's a way you can vent to your friends and even if your friend is going through something worse or vice versa mm. there's a way you can both still support each other through that and mm. acknowledge that each other's feelings are valid and then it makes you feel hurt yeah yeah are you the person in your friends group who talks the most about mental health or is, uh, is, it, is it more your your inner because you definitely said one off definitely yeah. one off i think um it's a lot more of an open conversation with a lot of my friends now because a lot of us started going through something, especially through that COVID year last year. Mm. I think a lot of us struggled with different things. And um, it's a very open conversation like, oh, yeah, when I was at therapy, yeah, this is what wow, I learned. Yeah, and wow. they're like, oh, wow, wow, yeah, more well, my therapist was saying this. And I love that we talk about having therapists, whereas yeah. before that, I wouldn't be caught dead talking about uh, going to therapy. I'd be too yeah. mad to even go to therapy. Yeah. And now, like, yeah. It's so I don't know if I would be the most open, but there's um, I'm definitely one off, yeah, for sure. Do you get do you get called brave a lot? <sighs> yeah, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> fucking hell. Nah, you know hey, what? You know, it's kind of yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's. <laughs> but I mean, the thing is, so, so last year I yeah. um I decided to open up about my mental health on mm. air, and um which was a big deal. It was mental health week, and yeah, it I felt it felt appropriate. And I told the boys I'm going to talk about my journey, whatever, because mm -hmm. I was sort of at a good point where I think I could talk about it, and and I thought, you know, I think it would I think it would be good for me to get it off my chest because I was having this real complex over, oh, I want to, you know, everyone loved this version of me, but you know, I was having a hard time turning that on. Yeah, so right. wouldn't it be if people love me? Wouldn't it be better if they just knew all of me rather mm -hmm. than just the version of me that they've been fed? Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe if I'm open with it, then I'll 
find it easier to come to work some days when mm. I'm having a rough time because people will know that I'm struggling with that. So I did do that and it was the best thing I could have done and it was a really great moment for me. But um, all of a sudden afterward, everyone's like, oh, are you like, they think you're the voice. Yeah. You're the voice of mental health now. <laughs> and I'm like, well, no, 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 no. I just want to like, and I'm not, I don't want this to sound like um, self-absorbed in any way or selfish in any way. But yes, I'm quite happy to have the conversation about mental health. I'm quite happy to, to facilitate a conversation on air and even mm. at home with yeah. my friends, flatmates, whoever. But just because I'm a public person mm. that has spoken about mental health, mm. it doesn't mean I should hold the weight or the pressure to be the voice for mental health for fucking everybody. Yeah. If that makes sense. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I'm the host of a mental health show. Right. And, and everyone's like, well, you we haven't spoken about this part or you haven't spoken about this bill. And I'm like, oh, because I don't yeah. fucking know about it. I'm sorry. But yeah. yeah. And I think there, there was like saying like that I had mental health issues was one thing, but then having to realize or navigate afterward that I didn't have to confine to those mm. pressures was yeah. a whole nother thing that I had to get over. But, you know, I think now I'm just like, I think if you give in to those pressures too, mm. and I feel the same way with um, people who post, oh, sorry, I just burped, um, people who post, expect you to post every single social issue that's mm. going on. Yeah. Um, I think if you give in to that pressure, what that creates is kind of this like performative Mm. activist and I don't want that to be be me I always post about things I care about but I think if you're relying on a public figure or you're relying on an influencer to be giving you every bit of information about something I think you're in the wrong place mm. I think if you need information about social issues or news or, or anything like that mm. there's plenty of other outlets where you yeah. can get that like the news or like I don't know <laughs> Google or I don't know there's so many places that yeah. that hold that space and, and an influencer or a public figure they don't have to be that person mm. they can they can maybe direct you in the right place yeah but we don't have to be that space and I think once we all realize that then it would yeah I think it would be a lot easier space to navigate yeah if that makes sense absolutely I feel like I'm talking absolute gibberish no you're not like with this show mm. we always try and tell everyone it's it's on the web page i'm not a mental health expert mm. i've had life experience yeah same yeah yeah, yeah. that's why i can like talk yeah. to someone like you and we can go oh it's like that and yeah. like that mm -hmm. and that's and this show hopefully facilitates people who maybe are having issues or like, maybe maybe you're listening to this and you're going man i've i've had that thing too and that's mm -hmm. awesome or maybe you're listening to this and you're going oh man that actually sounds like me maybe mm -hmm. i'm having this thing and we direct you to get Mm -hmm. like a help or find help or investigate further yeah the show is not the cure no exactly yeah uh, if you're if, mm. listeners i'm so sorry but if you if you are listening to this and going oh i can't watch maybe i'll fast forward to the end of the episode where they give us the solution we don't know i don't actually have one because you know still struggling out here yeah you're but, out yeah. here just having anxiety <laughs> thoughts <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly what do you do with um with depression like mm. how are you and working on radio how are you with silence like, what do you mean? Like, when you got like a job where there's noise and interaction, even mm -hmm. though like I'm asking you, oh, how do you sleep? You're like, oh, yeah. I TikTok. Like, how, are you, how are you with like, just with your thoughts, just lying there? Um, I don't, to be fair, I don't really like to be in them that much. Yeah. And, not, and that's, that's cool. not yeah. me saying that they're dark all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just, I, I think I thrive off being busy and I only like being not busy if I feel like I've earned it. Right. And so I have to have like the most full on week ever mm. to have a Friday night where I do absolutely fuck all. Yeah. That's kind of the way my brain seems to work. And I'm not saying that's how everyone should be. That's just how I work. But I, um, yeah, sometimes when I'm in my thoughts, I can get really in my head about things. And, mm. and so I just try to avoid that space completely. And I don't think that's me just brushing things under the rug and not acknowledging them. It's mm. just me being very aware that that's not a space I'm comfortable in and not mm. a space I feel safe in. So I just have to do other things so that I'm not in that space. Do you have any tricks for when you do find yourself like going in there or you kind of suddenly realize, oh wait, I've accidentally popped in here? If you, I find, um, social media is a big trigger for me. Mm. So I've, for the last maybe year as well, I've had all my notifications off. 
Yeah, right. Yep. So yep. I don't get a I don't get a ding when I have an Instagram notification, Messenger notification, Facebook, Snapchat, nothing. Mm. None of it pops up on my phone. Great. The only notifications I have pop up are a text, mm -hmm. a call, obviously, but I'm always on Do Not Disturb, so you have to call me twice. Yeah. Um, or I think I have oh WhatsApp because that's how I communicate with my um, mm. work uh, crew, and I think I have CoStar, which is like. If you love star signs, you'll mm. know that app. It's like an astrology app, and it gives you a little affirmation every day. It's like, oh, it's like, um, oh, given to um, what you're feeling today, and I'm like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and you can click on you can click on the app and go and in deep into like what you're reading and astrology is for the day. But yeah. I get all I get is a text, an affirmation from <laughs> CoStar, and maybe a call, maybe a call. But yeah, that, I think that's how I get out of it. Because sometimes I have moments where I'll go. Oh, I'm going to turn my Instagram notifications back on. Yeah. And it literally will last not even a day. It maybe lasts a couple of hours and I can't do it and I have to turn them off again. So you get messages from people who are like, hey, thanks for talking about mental health. Mm -hmm. um, this is my own situation. And then they get they just offload on mm -hmm. you. I did, I did get that uh, when I first spoke. Not heaps, but enough for me to be like, oh, this is yeah, a lot yeah. and quite um, Well, trauma taxing. has weight. Yeah. Trauma has weight. It's quite taxing. Yeah. And I think I'm a, an empath as well. So I feel like I um, take on the emotions of others around me and the interactions I have. So like if my flatmate is having a shocker of a time mm. and really going through it, I think I really feed off her energy mm. and I can start to feel shit if she's feeling shit. Mm. Um, and that's just the way my sort of I don't know oh god it's a bit holistic but that's how I seem to work but um even in the form of messages if someone does reach up to me like that and is seeking mm. that from me I'm like wow this is a lot and it takes a lot for me to go okay I need to be in a safe space before I can reply to that because mm. I don't want to take on any of their emotional weight yeah yeah because it's a lot it's a lot so it's I think it's knowing what you can and can't take, know your limitations as well. Yeah. Mm. Mm. No, I'm, I'm the same. I'll get people and I, I usually just, I thank them, mm -hmm. say thank you. Um, uh, and Give them some resource. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. say, hey, this, you can you can go to this. Mm -hmm. But some people want to like make you their therapist. And I think They're that's... Like, no, 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 no. I need a therapist myself. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. And I can't take your stuff to the therapist. <laughs> Because it, exactly. it, it costs a lot. It costs a lot of money. And yeah, I need to save my copies. So no, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm, I feel that. And do you, uh, do, you get, do you get some of the nasty stuff? Can I ask as well? Yeah. Yeah. It's not actually that often. Yeah. But it happens. And I quite, quite often, um, I think you get used to it in this sort of broadcasting space where mm. when you initially fall into it or go into it, um, you can have a hundred nice comments, mm. but you get one bad one and that'll ruin your whole day. Mm. Even though everyone else is gassing you up, it's one, one stink one will, can ruin your day. But um, as from advice from my co-host Nixon, he's always said, if you can't take the bad, don't take the good. Mm. So it's just easier to just not read any at all. Yeah. But when you do get bad feedback, um, it is challenging, but you kind of just need to remember that it's a loud minority all the people that aren't messaging, mm. so like in the morning, for instance, on the show, all the people that aren't texting in are the passive listeners that mm. you haven't invoked anything out of them, mm. which probably 99% of the time means that they're still a fan of you and mm. they don't mind. Mm. Um, it takes effort for someone to text in and say, yeah, you're a dumb bitch or whatever they might say. Mm. So I just have to remember, okay, all those people listening, those hundreds of thousands of people listening that haven't texted in, mm they don't care so why do i need to care about this one person so i think it used to get to me but i don't it doesn't really get to me at all now i'm now i'm just like mm, whatever <laughs> cool bro or well, you know yeah. or i'll just say it on air and i'm like oh the person that texts us in shush in terms of mental health mm -hmm. and the workplace mm -hmm. like when you've got anxiety and depression and and you're in the kind of workspace that you're in mm. like how, how do you navigate like situations in the workplace I think it's being really open about your mental health, your mental state. And like, I will literally just can't go to the boys. I'm fortunate enough that I'm really close to the boys I work with. Yeah. I can just go, hey, haven't had enough, like, have had a bit of an off day. Just bear with me, but I'm here. And I've always had this rule that if I'm at work, I'm good. Mm -hmm. If I, if I'm really, really bad, I will 
you know, mm. sack up and say, hey, I can't come to work. Yeah. I've had a couple of mental health days before and that's totally fine and they're totally cool with it. But I think just being open rather than coming to work in a, maybe a temperamental state mm. and not making them aware of it just puts them on edge and mm. it just puts a strain in our relationship. And it, I do find comfort in this, although it's kind of sad, that actually a lot of the announcers at my work within our building, mm. I'm pretty sure nine out of 10 of us go to therapy. Mm. And you know we all have something we're dealing with and whether we're not diagnosed with something necessarily, mm. we all need someone to talk to because it is, it's not that relatable what we do and you mm. know, with the space we're in. So I think I have a lot, of, um, yeah, a lot of comfort in that, knowing that all of us are kind of dealing with something in one way or another. So mm. once I realize that, or having that conversation with anybody, whether it's the boys in my circle, or whether it's um, one of the mates I have in the afternoon show, or whether it's someone from another station, like one of the other girls or guys, just saying like, oh, I'm really struggling, or just messaging them straight away. We've all got this really good support network where we all have each other's back. So I think in our workspace, it's just being open. Mm. It's just, just saying, I'm off today. And people are like, okay, cool. Because everyone just seems to get it. It's nice. What do you do to make yourself feel good? What's your, what's your treat? Because I always, anyone asks me any advice on, on anxiety and depression I always say hey don't forget to reward yourself mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. um, I found that online shopping is not the one um, <laughs> <laughs> well COVID kind of broke it yesterday me and a couple of my friends we went to a bar and watched the UFC yeah. and I was not feeling like doing anything at all but just doing that getting out of the house and doing something I think is a way I can reward myself and going ah oh, fuck it if I'm going to spend a whole bunch of money on food out <laughs> who cares it's nice um, sometimes I'll go on just a walk and I know people aren't into that and it sounds a bit airy fairy but just if it's a nice day go for a fucking walk like we have so many here in Tamaki Makoto we've got so many amazing places mm. you can go walk I love going out like Piha ways and just going for a little ooh, bush walk ooh, put my headphones on mm. that because that's so not something I'd normally do mm. but it's like kind of a treat to myself to go do that yeah go to the beach read a book the other day I went for an ocean swim yeah man it was world ocean day and everyone was jumping in the ocean, so I thought, oh, fuck, I better. And, um, but I didn't, I wasn't thinking about it as like a reward for myself. Mm. I was just thinking about it like, oh, I, you know, public sort of person, better mm. advocate for World Ocean Day. It's a cool mm. thing. Yeah. Um, I set up my phone. I, I chucked my phone away. I put my rashi on because it's cold. Um, jumped in the ocean. And it was the most, it was cold mm. and windy and rough. But it was the most amazing feeling and just hanging out with Tangaroa for a little bit, you know, having my time in the Moana and then getting out. I was like, oh my God, I feel amazing. And I just, the rest of my day, I was having a shit day. Mm. The rest of my day was amazing. So maybe like just step out of your comfort zone a little bit. I feel yeah. like that's how I reward myself. Like just go do something fucking fun. Yeah. Yeah. Just go do something random. And you can do it on your own. You don't have to be with friends. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's my little lesson for you. <laughs> Is there anything, we ask this of every guest in the shower, mm -hmm. is there anything, um, because you've come into my safe space, I'm very appreciative of it, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anything that you would like to share in the shower? Oh God, you put me on the spot. There's um, no, and since, since you're a fellow anxiety thinker, there's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answers, oh wow, okay. Yeah. Even though I'll be going, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that. <laughs> um, I don't know, I guess it would just be that, um, just to know with whatever journey anyone listening is on that it's like I've said earlier it's not you don't just have one bout of depression or one bout of anxiety and then it just stops it's a constant and and you will always go through it and you will always reference back to it and I think you grow and you grow and like in the last like two years I've still got the same issues but I'm so much more self-aware I've, I've got um, more tools to be able to deal with it. But I know there's gonna be times where I'm gonna face those challenges again. So I think it's just being very aware that like, it's normal, it's okay to talk about it. You shouldn't hold it in. And that um, it's just a roller coaster and it will come in waves. I think acknowledging that will, it will make you just be like, Ugh, you just gotta to come to an acceptance of it. You can't just get rid of depression and throw it in the bin. Um, it doesn't work like that, sorry. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, I guess that's all I'd say. I don't know what else to say other than that, but yeah. It's just, it's a fucking battle, and, but it's okay. And it kind of makes you better, and like trauma makes you funnier as well. So <laughs> I feel like the funniest people, they've been through some shit, so yeah. I've won awards. Um, exactly, see, there you go, there you go, yeah. Eating Fried Chicken in the Shower is produced for RNZ by Charlie Bleakley of Fruit and Nut Productions. The engineer is Rangi Powick. The executive producers are Justin Gregory and Tim Watkins. 
You can find this podcast however you just found this podcast. Or if you're listening on the radio, go to RNZ's podcast page and look for the chicken. If you're rating podcasts and you want to rate ours, give us five stars. Remember, more stars, more chicken. If you want to share your comfort food and your mental health safe space with me, then you can tweet me on at James Norquise. If you're experiencing mental health issues and you're in New Zealand, you can text 1737 or go to the RNZ Fried Chicken page and we'll have a list of different mental health practitioners that might be able to assist you. If because of the pandemic you're experiencing COVID-related mental health issues, you can go to www.health.govt.nz. Look for the COVID page and you'll be able to find mental health resources there. Stay safe. Vaftai lava. Matawa.